नमस्कार गुड मॉर्निंग डियर डिवोटीज एंड फ्रेंड्स द लेटेस्ट स्टार्ट दिस वन विद द श्लोक शांताकारम भुजग शयनम पद्मनाभम सुरेशम विश्वाधारम गगन सदृशम मेघवर्णम शुभांगम लक्ष्मीका कमलनयन योगी ध्यानगम्यम वंदे विष्णु भवभयर सर्वोकनाथ वी वर स्टार्टिंग द भागवत ए भागवत दैट फॉर अ लॉन्ग टाइम वी आर स्टार्टिंग ऑलमोस्ट द इयर इज ओवर and the last sunday we discussed who can be called a true sadhu the that god the sri krishna he said that who can be recognized or uh, 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 we can accept him as a good sadhu and he gave so many qualities today we will be finding that he is telling about who can be called a true devotee so this responsibility of the devotees and who is a true devotee this is very interesting and this is called scriptural injunction sometimes you will find then in different places it has been mentioned you should perform things according to the scriptural injunction what is the scriptural injunction we will find over here first a sadhu a highly the exalted spiritual soul how you will understand apparently there is no difference from an ordinary person as they always say the darkness and then excess light at the same you cannot see anything so that is the way when the ashwadhu is a very highly exalted spiritual personality and a completely opposite person and the tamasic person the both are almost same apparently you won't be able to understand so the lord has given the 28 qualities by which we can recognize a good sadhu the here today we will study the same lord he is talking with his devotee and his friend his follower uddhava and he is telling how to understand a good devotee now what is the difference between a sadhu and a devotee we will come to know about it the sadhu has already realized and that is the reason all those good qualities unless he could achieve those good qualities it was not possible for the realization the realization is a conception and that you have to go beyond as they call always in the vedanta maya that all these things are nothing but the illusory so that way you have to go and in the process as you call it sadhana when we are progressing towards that godhead we develop wonderful qualities that we have already read and devotee and let let us the true devotee how the lord sri krishna is mentioning gatva agatva atha ye boi mam yavan yashashmi yadrishaha भजंती अनन्न भावेन ते मे भक्ततमा मतः ते मे भक्ततमा मतः मतः इज माय ओपिनियन हुज ओपिनियन गॉड श्री कृष्ण हिमसेल्फ मे मतः मे द गॉड हिमसेल्फ हिज ओपिनियन 
Bhakta Tama, he is the highest devotee who, who do not clearly know about me, Gatva or Gatva. Just heard about God and God is there and God can help you, God loves you, all this way. Just hypothetical. They have, they do not know exactly what is God and how to realize God, nothing like that. God is supreme being and he is the self of all, he is the existence, knowledge, bliss, nothing, they didn't know anything of it. But worship me with full devotion. Bhajanti ananna bhavena are, in my opinion, the best devotees. So, what we learn from this? This is a complete faith. And sometimes the young Narendra Nath, who is to come to Sri Ramakrishna, used to say, is a blind faith. Then Sri Ramakrishna immediately said, either say faith or no faith. What is blind faith? It cannot be. There cannot be a word like that. The here we cannot say it is a blind faith. No. In the beginning, he is depending on some words, somebody's words, okay, a guru, or the scripture, or the expounder of a scripture. He is listening to that and then he is moving accordingly having the faith in believing the God is there. There's a beautiful story that Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, the parables of Sri Ramakrishna it is there. To explain this way, one gentleman as a Brahman, he used to expound the Bhagavatam. Now, at the, those days, now also, the people, they believe that if you listen to the, the Bhagavata, then your body and mind become purified. So they used to go and listen to the. And there will be some people that they explain the Bhagavata, they read from the Bhagavata, it is still there, this tradition. The one man used to do like that in a village. But before that, he used to drink a glass of milk. And the milk used to be supplied by a milkmaid. The lady used to come from the other bank of the river. So if she was not getting the boat, ferry boat, she used to be late. And the Brahman is to get angry. When I will go to my class, or I have to give the class. And why you, can, you can't, you have to bring them, you should bring the milk, then I will warm it, then I will drink it. Now, how it is possible? He used to review. One day, the lady was too late. At the time, the gentleman, the Brahmana, sat and started giving the class. And this lady secretly was going and she knew she was very much afraid the Brahmana will be very angry today. That was his routine. Now today the routine has broken. The, she, he could not drink the milk before going to the class. So the lady was afraid and so, slowly uh, she was coming. And that time she heard the Brahmana is explaining to the devotees by the God's grace one can cross the Bhavasagara, the ocean of this life. So the lady was thinking, the milkmaid was thinking, oh, if that is so, if they can cross the Sagara, means ocean, as the uneducated lady couldn't recognize the Bhavasagara means this life, it's not the ocean, but she took it literally. Oh, if the people, by taking the name of God, can cross the ocean, walking on the water, can't I do that? It's a small river only. Next day morning, she was before time. Then, naturally, the Brahmana asked, what is the matter? How could you come today? Is the boatman was there? And no boatman, he's always late. I just walked on the water. Then, it were, the, naturally, the Brahman couldn't believe her. How it is possible? Walking on the water? Yes, sir. Yesterday only you were telling that if you believe in God and you can cross the whole ocean, Bhavasagara. Bhavasagara is a completely different thing. 
and truly you walked on the water by sticking the name of God. Yeah, I can show it to you. Come, you can also do that. The faith. The lady took the Brahman on the bank of the river and, oh God, I have to cross the river and the boatman is not here. Please help me. And she started walking on the water. And not only that, she asked the Brahmana also to come because Brahmana was the teacher. But the Brahmana was not having the faith. The lady was having the faith. That is exactly what Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said. The faith can take you in an unbelievable way. The gentleman who was expounded the Bhagavata and he was telling the God as the supreme power and in that power, through that power, he can take you across the Bhavasagara, but he never believed it. He only said it. And this lady, simply hearing, believed it. And if she followed, and that is the way it happens. Gatva agatva atha evo imam yavan yashchashmi yadrisha. How I am, what is my power? They don't know anything of it. But they have a tremendous faith. Since the scripture has said that God is there, there must be God. There is another story the, that's called the uh, Prahlada. Mm, no, it is Dhruva. The Dhruva and Prahlada are two great characters. They are two devotees, the same Lord Vishnu. So it's Dhruva, the mother told, if you go and call God, he will come. Just mother said, what is God? How does it look? What is the quality? What the God can do? Nothing. That, that young man never knew anything of it. But the mother said, God is there. And if you sincerely call on God, God will appear before you. And whatever you say, God will fulfill. On that faith, he entered into the forest and started simply calling, Oh Vishnu, where are you? Oh Vishnu. That was infested by the animals. So naturally, people, they could not think of it. But the child, the he thought, what is the problem? God is there. God will protect me. I am calling God. God is all-powerful. Mother told faith. Then you know the story. Many of you know the story that then the Narada came and then guided. Narada became his guru. He guided that this is the mantra you should chant. You need not to roam around, sit under the tree. This will happen, that will happen, then the Lord will come. And the Lord came. Faith. Gyatva agyatva atayevai maam yavan yashchashmi yadrishaha bhajanti ananna bhavena te me bhakta tamamataha. He is the highest. You know, the one direct disciple, the Ramakrishna mission was formed on the 1st May 1897 by Swami Vivekananda. They were the direct disciples of Sri Ramakrishna. They lived with Sri Ramakrishna, talked with Sri Ramakrishna. They got the training from Sri Ramakrishna. And then afterwards, as Sri Ramakrishna said that you should live together under the leadership of Naren, they lived in that way. Ma Sharadamani Devi, she was also present and she was also guiding them, helping them. Now slowly, slowly, young men, they started coming, listening to, uh, through the different Swamis about Sri Ramakrishna. They never saw Sri Ramakrishna. They never knew who is this Sri Ramakrishna. They only heard about him through different lectures, particularly from Swami Vivekananda. And they started coming and joining from different family background, different linguistic group, different religions. They all started coming. Then one day, the one direct disciple was telling another direct disciple, see, look at these boys. They have never seen Sri Ramakrishna. They never lived with Sri Ramakrishna. But still, they love Sri Ramakrishna. They are more blessed than us. We lived with him. We knew who is he. We saw so many miracles. And the miracles happened in our own lives. 
But still these boys who has never gone through these experiences, they are attracted to Sri Ramakrishna. Are they not more devotee than us? Then the other Swami nodded, yes. So this is the thing, we are blessed. So we are coming to that God without knowing, just we read, Gatva agatva atha yevai maam yabana yashchashmi yadrishaha. This is the Bhagavata, Sri Krishna's word. But it is applicable even today to all of us who are trying to realize God, to love God, to see God, to develop the divine qualities within us. Bhajanti ananya bhavena, only knowing on do. See, so many hundreds of books we sell. The Ramakrishna Mission publication, so many thousands of uh, the titles are there. The one of the, if you see, look at that, uh, just Bible, the Bible in millions they print and distribute. Majority of the Bibles people don't purchase, it is freely distributed. But apart from that, there's only one book, Bible. But apart from that, varieties of the subjects, if you see, in the whole world, I think, it is the contribution of the Ramakrishna mission. At the time of Swami Vivekananda, if you read the books written by the Swami Vivekananda's brother, Mahendranath Datta, he mentioned there was no religious books. It was not available. Only a few people used to have, and they used to copy it by hand. Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna also copied. He was having a very good handwriting. And he also copied some portion of the holy book. So like that, they used to, very few people they used to have the scripture. Mostly they used to listen from those people. And today, just go to any website and order the book. It is immediately available. So that is the way, the great contribution. So many people, they are purchasing the books and they are reading it, they are having some idea and some doubts. This is going on. But think of the so many devotees dedicating their whole life for this ideology. Now, if you see that in the Ramakrishna mission, 163 or 65 centers in India Almost all of them, they are serving this corona, this virus 19, that, that uh, patients, people are shunning. They don't like to go, don't like to come out. They are so much afraid. Even the whole locality, the neighborhood are afraid that if there is someone suffering in that way. And these people, our swamis, our brahmacharins, our devotees, they are collecting funds and either cooking cooked food or the raw materials they are going and supplying to these people going so close to them and helping them without fearing for death so this why god will be happy sri ramakrishna will be happy mother will be happy that's all they have not seen him are they not great that is exactly what sri krishna is telling I read again this verse. This is the 11th skanda, 11 uh, adhyaya, 33 number verse. Gatva agatva atayebai maam yaban yashchashmi yadrishaha bhajanti ananna bhavena te me bhaktatama mataha. He is my great devotee. Now the bhakti is divided into different categories. The worldly, then scriptural, then spiritual, then physical, vocal, mental, the different type of devotion we can say. And Navoda Bhakti, there's a traditional nine ways of devotion are there. We are not going to discuss today on, on that. That is a different topic. But Gattva Agnatva, so this is the main thing have faith. Why? Sri Ramakrishna said. Don't have any doubt about it. With promise, Sri Ramakrishna said, God is there. You can see God. You can talk to God. 
and why not believe it? The great soul, when he is telling, he, that he is there and it's truly we can see that God. Then the Lord described the responsibilities of the devotees. Now the devotees have come, the what they should do, the, what is the responsibility? Then he is telling in the 34 verse, Mat Linga, Mat Bhaktajana, Darshana, Sparshana, Archanam, Paricharya, Stuti, Paiha, Guna Karmanu Kirtanam. Devotees should see Mat Darshana, touch Sparshana, worship Archanam, Sarb Paricharjaya, praise Stutihi and salute my image, Praha Guna Karmanu Kirtanam. They should also do the same to my devoted devotees, the sadhus. Sadhu, he has said, who is a good sadhu? And the person who is having all those qualities, and for him also, almost like a living God, the devotee should worship the sadhu. What the devotee should do? He should see God in the images, in the picture, in the photos. And that way, they can understand, oh, this is the God. Ma Saradavani Devi said about Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, the looking at his picture is also seeing him. And if you look at the picture of Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna, you see God. That's a great statement of Mother. That when we are looking at the picture, immediately we can imagine, I'm looking at the God, God in human form. I can recognize it. When the God comes in the form of Vishnu, Shanka Chakra Gada Padma Dhari, and it is a some conception it is very difficult to uh, accept because we are not hab habituated with the four hands and all those type of the description that has been given uh, for the God. No, we, we are not. But when you look at Ramakrishna, just like any of our family member and an elderly person, maybe my father, my grandfather, I can look at him, I can talk to him. There is nothing absurd in it. And that's why the, when the Arjuna saw the, the Vishwarupa of the Sri Krishna, he said, Krishna, I, it is unbearable. A man like Arjuna, he said, Krishna, it is unbearable. I cannot look at you in this way. Please come back to the normal form. I like to see you in that form. And here the God has come in a so humble, simple form. And when you look at it, so he says, Darshana. Then Sparshana, when you are cleaning the photo or the image, the Sparshana. Archanam, then we are worshipping. There are methods are there, systems are there. It has been developed through ages. And it is also available, the, the short worship of Sri Ramakrishna, the what one should do and how to do, everything is there. So Archanam. And the best thing in Sri Ramakrishna tradition, Anyone can do the worship. In the other places, some of the people, I do not know why, uh, they say the only the person who is a Brahmana, who was in, born in a Brahmana family, is allowed to do the worship. But in the Ramakrishna tradition, it is not. If you have devotion, then you are capable to worship. As the, whether the lady or the gentleman, no, no problem. The, you should have the faith and love for God. So, darshana, sparshana, and archanam, worship, paricharjaya, then serving. Then when you are serving, you are preparing a garland, then putting the garland, burning an incense sticks, cleaning the whole temple area, and also preparing food for God. And this God, in the human form, they had some choices, they liked some type of food, so you prepare those things as best as possible and prepare in a great, with great care that it should not be touched by anything else. 
then you are offering it. In the whole process, your whole mind is thinking of God, and the more you are thinking of God, more your mind is purified. Again and again, as we said, that I mainly mentioned, as I, say, I believe, that uh, there are only two things, the world and God. The God who is the creator and the world is his creation. Now, if we go to God, we have to leave his creation. But after the realization of the God, if God wills, he can send back to his creation and he, you can enjoy the same creation too, like the avatars. <coughs> so this is the way we have to. Then paricharja stuti. And pra, praha, praha me, means here salute me. And they, they always say, particularly the Vaishnava tradition, the devotional tradition, they say one should lie down on his chest and stretch his hand, touch the forehead on the floor and the hand, both the palms are touching the floor and the whole body it should touch the floor and so that you are ashtanga, all eight parts of your body touching that and then you are giving that, including your mind. So that is the way you should, why? I am humble, sir. When the Arjuna was, you know the, the Bhagavad Gita, the Arjuna in the, he was going on giving the argument the Lord was very quiet listening. He never commented. But the when Arjuna said, Shishya Steham Sadhimam Twam Prapannam, I am your disciple and I beg your mercy. I am thoroughly confused. I cannot take any decision. Please guide me. Then the flow of mercy and the God's grace started coming to Arjuna through buddhi that we know. Here also, when we show that we are humble, then the grace of God, they come. So first one should look at the God, see God. And that is the reason Bhagavan Sri Ramakrishna said, he is the God himself. So he is telling that one should make the idol, an image of God in such a way so that people love to see that beautiful image. Sometimes we make somehow and then if the eyes are not properly there, it is an image only you are making. We do not know whether God is just like that or not. Through that particular image, we are trying to go to God. Why don't you make the image nicely? The God is Durga. Sometimes some people, they make the image in such a way so fierce. Fear. That may be outsiders are doing, but the devotee, should see a very loving face of mother. The Krishna, so attractive Krishna, the eyes are so beautiful. Once you look at those eyes, you won't be able to turn it off from there. The God's image should be very attractive, very beautiful. Wherever we do, we must keep in mind the God's first thing is attraction. And Krishna is attracting and the beautiful image so you look at that image and you like to see that image. You like to meditate on that image. You like to keep that image within your heart. That is the way first, darshana. The first thing is, first you see and then love, as, love at first sight. The moment you are looking at that beautiful image, you started loving that God. Then sparshana. You become close to that God. Then you go and touch the feet of the God. And slowly you are touching his body, cleaning that. And you are thinking, I am touching the God's body. Many people in different temples, Hindu temples, thousands of temples, millions of images are there. And thousands of worshippers are also there. But they don't do all those things with devotion. Why? Because you have to read the scripture. The scripture will guide you. So when you are touching, you should feel, I am touching the God. Sometimes we put the chandana 
on the forehead of the God and it goes to the eye of the God, on the eye of the God. Now you think, if the Chandana is rolling on the eye of, the, of you, will you feel comfortable? Immediately will go wash and splash. Same thing with God because he is leaving. And my beloved only. So one should be very, very careful when you are decorating the God. And by that way, oh, this is only a picture, is nothing. No, not like that. You should think that this is the God before me. And when we are crossing, we must be very humbly crossed before. This is the temple, the God is sitting. We are just crossing in front without caring what God is sitting there. No, one should not. This is not a devotee. Devotee will never do like that. He will be humble as if the Lord God is sitting over there and with the folded hands he should cross. So darshana, sparshana, archanam, worship. Whatever way you like to worship, you can worship. Only thing you have to go on telling you from pouring your heart to God and tell him everything and also as you feel hungry offer food to God as you feel thirsty offer water to God like that that is called archanam then paricharja and stutihi paricharja serving and stutihi this is the reason we chant the stotra the great souls they compose this thing. See, suppose there was no, nothing was there to chant. How it would be? So that is the great contribution that our, the uh, predecessors, they have composed. Swami Vivekananda has composed a beautiful Arutrika song. Khandana bhava bandana, jaga bandana bandi if you understand the meaning of it, automatically your whole mind will be concentrated. Majority of the people, they only sing and they don't particularly know what are the words they are uttering. And even if they know, they don't understand the meaning. But even then they are doing. But if you can understand not only clearly the words and also the meaning of it, your whole soul, your whole mind is becoming concentrated with every word of it. That is called archana. And this paricharja, we are serving the God. Serving the God means, that is exactly where Swami Vivekananda said, service to man is service to God. Why? Is this Vivekananda, because he was an emotional person, he said like that? No, we will come to that. And for that we have to go quickly, of course. And these different verses are there. We will find how the God is telling each and everything is nothing but me. Whomever you serve, it comes to me. So this is the 34th verse. In 35th verse, he says, Mat katha srabane sraddha, mat anudhyanam, sarvalabha upaharanam, Dashena Atma Nivedanam Mat Katha Strabane Sraddha With faith they should listen about me. When you were reading the biography of Sri Ramakrishna or Masharada or reading the Bhagavata 10th uh, Skandha 10th chapter, that they are about the Krishna Sraddha with complete faith. And when we are reading that book, we have to transport our mind into that situation, that condition. Forget about everything. Only suppose you are reading five pages and it will take uh, hardly 10 minutes. And when you are reading, just you read like this. No, it is not a novel. It's not a storybook. It is something that you are going to visualize. And Swami Turiyanandaji said, today's imagination, tomorrow's realization. You are imagining that you are standing before. So every time when we chant the Bhagavad Gita, Parthaya Pratibodhitam Bhagavata Narayanena Sayam, that all those things we chant. This is a Gita Dhyana fast sloka 
and uh, the fifth uh, verse. The, if time is there, the whole Gita Dhyana can be chanted, but first and fifth is all right. When you are just chanting, Om Parthaya Pratibodhitam, and you imagine that the Lord God Sri Krishna is standing there and he is in that battlefield, so many thousands of people waiting to kill each other and there the calm and composed Sri Krishna is giving the wonderful lesson to Arjuna. Arjuna the powerful man, he is sitting at the feet of the Krishna, imagine that. And then there is a person who is noting down all the conversation, Vyasa, Vyasa ina gratitam purana monina madhe mahabharatam. So this way, Adhita Amrita Varshinim Bhagavatim. So Gita is nothing but the highest Advaita. And that is flow is coming. And you are going to receive that. There is only one existence and nothing else. The thousands and millions of soldiers who are there, each and every one is so eager to kill other. And each and every one is so egoistic thinking that I am going to kill someone, but I will be surviving. That is the situation. And there you are thinking completely ego free, completely dedicated to God. So the, this complicated situation, you are putting your mind. Swami Vivekananda said, if you can meditate in the hustles and bustles of New York, then only I can appreciate. Anyone can go in a corner and a silent place, whether he will meditate or not. But in the hustles and bustles all around, in the, and that in New York, even at the time of Swami Vivekananda, New York was so busy city. And now, unthinkable. Manhattan, my God, you cannot move. So there, if you can completely think all these things and nothing but the, the pictures, just movie, only one God is there, consciousness is there. So that he is telling, then guna karmanu kirtanam, and he should also do the same to my devoted devotees. Matkata sravani sraddha mat anudhyanam, sravani sraddha mat anudhyanam, meditating. What will happen? Sarva labha upaharanam. If you give the wholeheartedly dasena atma nivedanam and you serve very humbly and by with a devoted mind, sarva lava upaharanam, offer everything. Oh, I am doing this because I will get back this. I, I have done this many uh, the pujas and so I am going to gain this. No, nothing like that. Majority of the people they come and they come to the Eastern religion, particularly Hindu religion, thinking there must be something, uh, miraculous power is there, and if we follow that, we will achieve that. The, they'll try to meditate, and then they can control this man, that man, well, nothing like that. If you have those, of course the result is there, power is there. If you have those, you are not going to get the blessings of God. So that in the 35th verse it says, Matkatha Sravani Sraddha. With a great devotion they should listen to my words. Mat Anudhyanam. And they should meditate also on me. Sarva Labha Upaharanam. Offer me wholeheartedly anything they have achieved. Yat Karoshi, Yadasnasi, Yat Juhosi, Dadasi Yat. In the Bhagavad Gita, same Krishna is telling, whatever you are doing, whatever, just give it to me, offer it to me. So that way, and serve like an humble servant. When we are cleaning, oh, I am cleaning this, nobody is doing it. No, I got the opportunity to do it and I should do it. And when you are doing it, humbly you should do. There's sometimes some people cleaning the temple, creating the sound and dragging the chair. 
they are not actually serving God, they are cleaning. But the devotee will never make any sound. In the temple, the God is sitting. I cannot make that like that. But unfortunately, if you go to the Hindu temple, I don't know why, the Bhagavata they read, but why they don't understand that God loves cleanliness. But the majority of the temple, there will be so, so much of water and the old flowers, they are walking on that and whole area is so dirty. You cannot go and sit under that. Then they are burning the, the lamps, the oil is also spilling on that. Oh God. So that, there they have kept the God. And then do you think that God will be very happy? Never. The God loves cleanliness. And in the Christian tradition they nicely say, Cleanliness is next to the godliness. So that is the very clean you should be physically also. So that uh, you have to ensure haranam dashena with the humbleness, atmani vedanam, they should dedicate. Mat janma karma kathanam, mama parma parva anumodanam, gita tandava baditra. Gasti vi mat griya utsava. See how step by step everything the God is dictating. God is telling you this is the way you should do. They should discuss about my life and divine actions. Janma karma. Janma the birth and karma the action that the God has done. They should do that. What is the Bible? And the life of Jesus, if you don't know, and if you try to get his teachings, it don't go that way well to the person. You can read only the teachings. But if you know the dedication, contribution of the Jesus, his whole life, Lord Buddha, his whole life, Sri Ramakrishna, his whole life, the great master is a very authentic biography of Sri Ramakrishna, written by a direct disciple of Sri Ramakrishna. If you read, you will find, oh, yes, and the life of Sri Swami Vivekananda, mother, then only you can appreciate what they are telling. They lived those things. So, mat janma karma kathanam. You should understand, you should listen the birth, the divine birth of God, very humble birth. Look at Lord, that, that uh, Buddha. He was a king's son. Mother was a queen. And she was a princess. And she was going, as is the tradition in India, and the child birth should be in the maternal house. So the lady, she was going to go to her father's place. But the God, the divine God who was to incarnate as Buddha, he never liked it. So she had, had to stop and give birth to that divine baby in a jungle. And that jungle, of course, afterwards it has become a great pilgrimage center. But in a jungle, she, that boy was born. This, this Jesus, in a very humble birth. And the Siddhartha Krishna, in a very humble birth. So that is the way we have to understand. How, in the Sri, Sri Krishna himself, his parents were in the prison and he, he was born, manifested over there in the prison. Still it is there in India, Mathura. So this is the way the Janma, Karma, the Kathanam, Mama Parva Anumodanam and they should organize programs they should organize the programs the the divine programs with the music song dance and the celebrate in my temple so that is the reason in all temple they are organizing this this is the scriptural injunction instruction by the sri krishna directly yatra they should have the pilgrimage. They should go to different holy places. 
bali bidhanam cha offering of worship and you will find all the time the either the the fruits and sweets and clothings and with some cash the money they will offer it to god so that because those people who are serving over there they will eat those things as a prasada and they also distribute on all special day of the year special day of the year sometimes you know akshay titiya is a special day kali puja special day navaratri is a special day and similarly in all religion the traditions are there special day tradition so that way they should follow and then vaidika tantrik diksha initiation is a must for making the spiritual development most of the people they think no i understand this so i will have this way no initiation is necessary and here the lord is mentioning not that the vaishnava way no the diksha he is telling vaidiki tantriki diksha the vaidiki diksha means is a is a initiation with knowledge tantriki diksha knowledge clubbed with action and devotion so that is called tantriki diksha ramakrishna mission they combine this vaidiki and tantriki the both tradition is there knowledge is there action means karma puja is there worship is there and repetition of the lord's name as the tradition of the tantra it is also there so vaidiki tantriki diksha madhya brot dharanam and sometimes you have to take the vow what is that now i am going to fast on this particular day and going to take 10000 names of god today like this brot dharanam navaratri the nine nights all the devotee they will follow that fasting the whole day and then taking the lord's name like the different way they will be observing and sometimes they will have the upavasha upavasha means fasting so that is the way one should continue then mama archa sthapane shraddha swata samhatya cha uddama udyana upavana akrida pura mandira karmani so look at it how specifically he is mentioning mentioning my images should be installed with faith the god's images we will come to that what are the images he said my images should be installed with great faith with eagerness if possible by the self at the devotee if he is capable he should make a temple and put the god individual if not collect fund from the public and install that samhatya cha uddamaha or with the help of the other and that is the endeavor uddama when you have thinking that i should start a temple and but i don't have much money and then you go to different people and approach them uddama you have to go every time every time and then only slowly slowly you can collect the fund and can start a temple and along with that uddana upavana you must construct garden so when a person is going to the temple there should be a small garden with the flower so the mind is changing if you go to belur mart they've nicely planned in that way now because of the tremendous pressure and the space is not more so construction they are making for feeding 10000 people at a time where they will feed so the buildings are coming up but mostly it is all ground green grasses trees birds are there like that flowers lot of flowers the moment one going to the temple mind should change so that is fast uddana upavana orchard should be there and 
akira playgrounds are the children are coming they are not very much interested to go to the temple their parents will go and the children should have the, the place to play over there so the playgrounds and pura mandira karmani residence and the temple where the residence the devotees coming from far where they will go this is lord krishna is telling thousands of years before so the guest houses should be there when the people coming from the distance can come and rest over there almost all the temple everywhere in india they will have a one part for the guest coming from different place and they staying over there so this is the way he says then he is telling some marjana upolepa kya upolepa bhyam some marjana cleaning temple should be clean every nook and corner should be clean because two things that way the ancient hindus they are very very careful about the hygiene then afterwards like many other things this have also been destroyed but the hindus were very hygienic society was there and this hygiene in because in the temple is a common place different people are coming if there is some something wrong then it will be affected the people who are coming they will be affected they should not so some marjanam cleaning upolepabhyam upolepa that means you should color it coloring is also very important but the temple means very clean and it must be properly colored and seeka mandala bartanaihi watering and also drawing the different painting should be there in different places and sufficient water means different people are coming the 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 toilet system should be there water should be there when a person is coming from distance those who are worshiping the god in the temple it is their responsibility because you have constructed the temple the devotees who are coming should not feel the any problem after reaching over there it is our responsibility so those who are living in the temple or in the society they it is their responsibility to look after griha srushushanam maiham service of my temple service of my temple maiham my temple how you should do dasavat humbly yat ama aya without grumbling yad amayaya grumbling oh we are only doing this people are not doing i am only doing this duty others are not doing there should not be any grumbling that's why again and again our seniors they used to say always think that you are blessed that you have got this opportunity god's work any one can do any time any one can come and do it but this is my blessedness i have been chosen for this particular duty i am doing it shami vivekananda worked and imagine he used to deliver 8 10 lectures every day and there was no microphone almost shouting and 10 lectures and every time new ideas new subject and when he where he used to speak before the americans who never heard about india as a country and there swami vivekananda used to tell them about indian culture and religion vedanta can you imagine but he never said that why god is taking so much of why not the other devotee other brother disciples he never said like that he went over there he worked this is i am blessed the god has given me this any cleaning and the this, this uh, i am in the kitchen or i am cleaning the floors or i am in the hospital or in the school wherever i am i am blessed the god has chosen me for this job humbly dasabat very humbly one should do again and again i say particularly 
in the American situation there only devotees are working and the other devotees who are coming in they see a volunteer but they will never consider this is a separate person they will consider that man as a representative of this society this Vedanta society if that young man make a mistake they will go and put in the comment oh these people don't, don't know how to behave and there all the time the bad names will be there bad names to whom to God if they come and see the cobwebs here and there immediately they will go and tell see I went to that temple they are not clean at all it's terrible it's better not to go there so they came to God that because of my fault I the servant over here I forgot that I am the servant I forgot that I am a humble servant of God so that is why it is great responsibility those who are working for the organization of this center it is not a club it is a temple it is a spiritual society so whoever comes should be treated in a great like a our honored guest amanittam adambhittam kritasya aparikirtanam opi deepavalokam me na upayunjat nibeditam without hankering for name and fame then when we are working without hankering for name and fame or dambhittam free from the ego kritasya aparikirtanam not propagating about one's own work I have done this I am done this I am done this <laughs> one should not do that so if I go on trumpeting beating the drum about my I did this good work that is very bad Opi Deepava Lokanam then he gives an example when you are offering you are burning a lamp and offer that to God should not use the lamp the light of the lamp for your own purpose that is also not nami upajunjat nivedanam even the light of the lamp offered to me should not be used for your personal purpose yajyat ishtatamam loke yaccha ati priyam atmanaha tat tat nivedayet mayam tat anantaya kalpate in the 41 verse it says what is most covetable to people and whatever is very dear to one those should be offered to me the whatever extra is there I am offering to God not like that the best thing that I like I should offer to God you know, there is a system in India that uh, the people they go a particular pilgrim place is there and suppose you like to eat apple um, of all fruits you should offer the apple over there to God and say no God I am not going to eat apple I dedicate why to control the senses that is a way but here the God is telling whatever you think best for you you love that you should offer that you should offer yajyat ishtatamam loke I love this thing I should offer that is the reason when I am purchasing anything for me at least some portion I should purchase first for God not that I purchase something and then took it from there and give it to God no 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 people should understand this that is not the system friends let me conclude now it is almost time that uh, who are the images of God now the temple is there and uh, different uh, things are there we are now ready but what is the God image on whom we can wo worship I will tell you that small story incident that happened in Sri Ramakrishna's life the Sri Ramakrishna was in Calcutta for treatment and that is called Shampukur. Shampukur is a, is a locality. And that was the Kali Puja night. 
Sri Ramakrishna, the worshipper goddess Kali, she asked the devotee to worship Kali. All the items they brought, the whatever is necessary to worship the goddess Kali. But Sri Ramakrishna was in deep meditation and there is no image of the Kali. So the devotees, they were confused what to do. That the Sri Ramakrishna, he is in meditation, in Samadhi, there is no Kali image and particular time to start the puja is also going. So what to do? That time, the great devotee, as Sri Ramakrishna said, he had more than 100% devotion. Sholo Ana, that means more than 100% devotion, that that Girish Ghosh came. And he came and told the other devotees, hey, why? Why you are not starting the puja? He said, puja, but where is the image? God's, the Kali image is not there. Other items are ready. You know what that Girish Ghosh said? Girish Ghosh said, oh, my fools. You don't know. Sri Ramakrishna himself is the goddess Kali. And he took some flower and offered at the feet of Sri Ramakrishna by saying, Glory to Mother Kali, Jai Kali, Jai Kali. And he offered that. Sri Ramakrishna went into further deep samadhi. So image means this holy man. That is also. But the here he says 11 images. I will only mention the names and the next day we will discuss. Surya, that means the sun. Agni, the fire. Brahmana. Holy person, Gava, Kau, Vaishnava, great devotee, Khan, Akasha, Maruta, air, Jalam, water, Bhu, earth, Atma, the soul. Then the last thing he said, Sarva Bhutani, all beings. That exactly I was trying to tell you. Swami Vivekananda said, the service to man is service to God. This is on the base of the scripture. And the Bhagavata, Sri Krishna, the Lord, he said, Sarva Bhutani, all being. Thank you, friends. And uh, is there any question? Okay. So let us conclude with this verse. Yam Brahma Borunendra Rudra Maruta Stunanti Dibya Stabai Bedai Sanga Padakramo Ponishadai Gayanti Yam Samaga Dhyana Vastita Tadgate namanasa Pashyanti yam yogina Yasyantam navidu Sura suragana Devaya tasmai namaha Om Shanti 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 Hari Om.